1995, I created a series for the BBC which starred George Cole as the gravedigger of London's Highgate Cemetery, the Victorian Valhalla, the last resting place of more than 166,000 men, women and children. And during my research at the British Library, I came to understand the importance of our burial places, of their history, their art and their architecture. The cemeteries of long forgotten civilizations have provided us today with an insight into their culture, their tastes, their fashion and their aspirations. It's perhaps no wonder that two of the seven wonders of the ancient world were graves. The mausoleum at Hali Canassus, the tomb of the Greek king Mausolus, which so impressed visitors with his beauty that large tombs have ever since borne the great king's name, Mausoleum. The Great Pyramid of Giza, the oldest yet the only surviving of the seven wonders. And more recently, what is undoubtedly one of the wonders of the modern world, the magnificent, the unforgettable Taj Mahal. In Cornwall, our parish churches are perhaps our finest treasures. For a thousand years, they've been at the centre of community life and death. They have served not just as a place of worship, but for meetings and celebrations of all kind. Feasts and dances, music festivals, plays, and for refuge in times of troubles. These multifunctional buildings and their burial grounds contain a wealth of historical detail. Their art and architecture documents the passing of centuries and the minutiae of the lives of our ancestors. Since a church has stood on this site since the 5th century, you'd assume that the churchyard would be chock-a-block full of ancient tombs and memorials, but look closer and you'll see that the majority are Victorian, a few Georgian, but none at all from the preceding centuries. So where are all the ancient graves? Generations upon generations have been buried here. The burial register records their interments. But many no longer lie in their original graves. The clue lies here in this comparatively recent Victorian annex to the church graveyard. The graves here lie undisturbed and the ground level is exactly the same here as in the road outside. But across the lane, in the church graveyard, the soil level is considerably higher. This soil has been worked for generations and not just for inhumations, but also for exhumations. The early Christians believed that entrance to heaven required a person's body to be undisturbed on the day of judgment, when their soul would be reunited with their body. Slowly, this belief was replaced by the doctrine of purgatory, a state of purification where it was the soul of the departed which suffered until their sins were purged and they then achieved the holiness necessary to enter heaven. The sanctity of the grave was not violated as long as the bones remained within the grounds of the church. Once this doctrine was generally accepted, churchyards became sites of recycling and their earth and worms participated in a sacred ecology. Coffins were reusable and largely to transport the body to the grave and not for the burial itself. The corpse was interred in nothing but a shroud. After a number of years had passed and decomposition had defleshed the body, the remains were exhumed and the bones taken away to be stored in a charnel house, the grave ready to be used again. This method of burial became widespread and common for more than three centuries churches with small graveyards compensated for the lack of space by reorganising the churchyard, emptying all the graves and levelling the ground once every 20 or 30 years. The more affluent churches commissioned custom-built mortuary chapels to be constructed in the graveyard, dedicated to St Michael from the function attributed to him of carrying the souls of the deceased to heaven. Following the Reformation, the doctrines of the Roman Catholic Church were replaced by those of the Church of England, and a permanent last resting place in the church graveyard became the accepted form of burial. The charnel houses fell into disrepair and were demolished. The bones they contained gathered together and buried in a communal grave. The charnels 
had been a place of superstition and of fear. Shakespeare's grave at Stratford-on-Avon was adjacent to the parish charnel and his inscription contains a warning. Good friend, for Jesus' sake forbear to dig the dust, enclose it here. Blessed be he that spares these stones and cursed be he that moves my bones.